Welcome to my channel RX Sam 2020. Today we discuss a drug name, Dapagliflozin. About Dapagliflozin belongs to the category of medicines called anti-diabetic primarily used for the management and treatment of type 2 diabetes. Type 2 diabetes is a condition that occurs when there is either less insulin or available insulin is not properly utilized by our body cells for lowering raised blood glucose. Medical Use Diabetes Type 2 improve blood sugar control along with diet and exercise in adults with type 2 diabetes. Reduce the risk of hospitalization for heart failure in adults with type 2 diabetes and known cardiovascular disease or multiple cardiovascular risk factors. Reduce the risk of cardiovascular death and hospitalization for heart failure in adults with symptomatic heart failure when the heart is weak and cannot pump enough blood to the rest of your body. Reduce the risk of a further worsening of your kidney disease, end-stage kidney disease, death due to cardiovascular disease, and hospitalization for heart failure in adults with chronic kidney disease. Contraindications Serious hypersensitivity reaction to this drug For example, anaphylactic reactions or angioedema Dialysis Safety and efficacy have not been established in patients younger than 18 years. It is not for people with type 1 diabetes. It may increase the risk of diabetic ketoacidosis, increased ketones in your blood or urine in people with type 1 diabetes. Special Precautions Severe Hepatic Impairment Use caution as the safety and efficacy has not been specifically studied. Pregnancy, not recommended during the second and third trimesters of pregnancy. Breastfeeding, not recommended. Drug interactions. Insulin or insulin secretagogues. Clinical impact. The risk of hypoglycemia may be increased when dapagliflozin is used concomitantly with insulin or insulin secretagogues, for example sulfonylurea. Intervention, concomitant use may require lower doses of insulin or the insulin secretagogue to reduce the risk of hypoglycemia. Lithium Clinical Impact Concomitant use of an SGLT2 inhibitor with lithium may decrease serum lithium concentrations. Intervention Monitor serum lithium concentration more frequently during dapagliflozin initiation and dosage changes. Side effects The most common side effects include yeast infections of the vagina or penis and changes in urination including an urgent need to urinate more often, in larger amounts, or at night. Low blood sugar levels, hypoglycemia. Increased thirst. Back pain. Pain in extremity. Nausea. Nasopharyngitis. Dehydration. Brand names that are mostly prescribed by doctors. Edistride. Farxiga, Foxiga, Turn, Qternet, Zidduo. Dosage. Take orally in the morning, with or without food. Diabetes type 2, to improve glycemic control. Initial dose, 5 mg orally once a day. May increase to 10 mg orally once a day for additional glycemic control if the lower dose has been tolerated. Maximum dose. 10 mg per day to reduce the risk of hospitalization for heart failure. 10 mg orally once a day. Ensure adequate renal function, e.g. FR greater than 45 ml per minute per 1.73 m square as glycemic efficacy is dependent on adequate renal function. If used in combination with insulin or an insulin secretagogue, 
A lower dose of insulin or the insulin secretagogue should be considered to reduce the risk of hypoglycemia. Chronic kidney disease and heart failure with reduced ejection fraction 10 mg orally once a day. Please note, correct volume depletion prior to initiating therapy. This drug is not recommended in patients with polycystic kidney disease or patients requiring or with a recent history of immunosuppressive therapy for kidney disease, as it is not expected to be effective. Renal Dose Adjustments For glycemic control in patients with type 2 diabetes mellitus, EGFR 45 ml per minute per 1.73 m square or greater, no adjustment recommended. EGFR less than 45 ml per minute per 1.73 m square use is not recommended. For all other indications, EGFR greater than 25 ml per minute 1.73 m square no adjustment recommended. EGFR less than 25 ml per minute 1.73 m square initiation is not recommended. However, patients may continue 10 mg per day. Liver Dose Adjustments Mild to moderate hepatic impairment, no adjustment recommended. Frequently Asked Questions Does dapagliflozin cause weight loss? Yes, dapagliflozin may cause weight loss in some patients. However, it is an uncommon side effect. If you experience sudden weight gain or have any concerns regarding your weight, discuss it with your doctor. What foods should be avoided while taking this medicine? Dapagliflozin may interact with household sugar and cause abdominal discomfort and stomach upset. Therefore, one should avoid consuming foods rich in sugar. Additionally, Avoid alcohol consumption while taking dapagliflozin as it may spike sugar levels in the blood or cause low blood sugar levels. Combinations Dapagliflozin with metformin Dapagliflozin works by removing excess sugar, glucose, from your body through urine. Metformin works by lowering sugar production in the liver, Delaying glucose absorption from the intestines and increasing the body's sensitivity to insulin. Together, they provide better control of blood sugar. With cytogliptin or wildagliptin, dapagliflozin increases urinary glucose excretion and reduces blood glucose levels. Cytogliptin or wildagliptin reduces the amount of glucose produced by the liver by raising insulin levels and decreasing the levels of glucagon, the hormone that increases blood glucose levels. Mechanism of Actions Sodium glucose cotransporter 2, SGLT2, expressed in the proximal renal tubules, is responsible for the majority of the reabsorption of filtered glucose from the tubular lumen. Dapagliflozin is an inhibitor of SGLT2. By inhibiting SGLT2, dapagliflozin reduces the reabsorption of filtered glucose and thereby promotes urinary glucose excretion. Dapagliflozin also reduces sodium reabsorption and increases the delivery of sodium to the distal tubule. This may influence several physiological functions including, but not restricted to, lowering both pre- and afterload of the heart and downregulation of sympathetic activity and decreased intraglomular pressure which is believed to be mediated by increased tubuloglomular feedback. Thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe to my channel and click the bell icon to get video updates.